Hi, this is Doug Rex. Today we're going to discuss the underwater EMR techniques developed by Dr. Ken Benmoller for the resection of large colorectal polyps and flat lesions. When we're performing endoscopic mucosal resection with the lumen insufflated with gas, the approach is typically to inject fluid into the submucosa in order to get distance between the polyp and the muscularis propria. Our goal is to resect the polyp and keep the muscularis propria intact and uninjured. We don't really know the shape in most cases of the muscularis propria when the lumen is insufflated with gas, but we know that that submucosal injection seems to be helpful in creating a safety distance between the polyp and the muscularis propria. Ken Binmoller developed his underwater EMR approach based on the endoscopic ultrasound observation that when the lumen is filled with water rather than gas, the muscularis propria consistently has a nice circular shape to it and there's a natural separation between the mucosa and the muscularis propria suggesting that we don't actually need to inject fluid into the submucosa to create separation between mucosal lesions and the muscularis propria. So it was really this EUS observation that led to the development of this technique which is fundamentally different from EMR with gas insufflation because it doesn't utilize submucosal injection. We'll be using the cautery settings recommended by Dr. Ben Moeller, cutting current, so the settings are auto cut, effect 5, maximum watts 80. So here's about a 15 millimeter lesion in the ascending colon seen with gas insufflation and then we're going to remove the gas by suction and fill the lumen with water and we're doing this with the water jet so we're on the water jet and in some cases just pumping water continuously in order to uh, keep the lumen full and then we're going to perform EMR without submucosal injection in this case we're using about a 15 millimeter snare you can see we've taken out the polyp and a little rim of mucosa around it and there's the defect after the transection using auto cut and the edges are clear no residual lesion some of these underwater resections that I'm going to show you are from my initial experience, which I think is useful because um, we're all sort of beginners uh, at the present time with this, except perhaps Ken Benmuller. Now, this is a kind of lesion I found it to be often helpful in, one that is scarred down. About half the lesions that are referred to me have some degree of scarring from a previous attempt at EMR, and this one has some scarring along the right-hand edge, and the snare seems to dig in along that scarred area a bit better underwater uh, than it does in gas insufflated uh, EMR perhaps because that tissue tends to float a little bit but I didn't get it all um, you can see that there's some red tissue right there on the uh, edge closest to us and then a little bit of residual polyp there Ken Benmuller has advocated marking the lesions with APC once you get underwater you can delineate the edges of the lesion by APC marking APC will work fine underwater just like the snare works fine underwater I found that generally I feel I can see the lesion still uh, quite well that little red area there we're resecting with some uh, surrounding mucosa so we're ending up with a piecemeal EMR but we're still getting an effective uh, EMR without performing injection moving to a slightly larger lesion in the ascending colon please notice that the bowel wall with the underwater technique looks relaxed the folds look relaxed the polyp and the submucosa seem to move into the center of the lumen a bit sort of float on their own I think that's important to the safety of the technique it's a good thing to look for uh, during the technique we are removing this lesion piecemeal but Ken has described removing two to four centimeter lesions on block using a 33 millimeter snare uh, underwater and the feasibility of that is probably uh, because with this technique the lesion doesn't get bigger when you do submucosal injection sometimes these lesions will double or more in size that doesn't happen underwater I'd be careful initially in what size pieces you take and look for this relaxed configuration Here's a very large lesion in the distal ascending colon and hepatic flexure. This lesion occupies about a quarter of the circumference over parts of it and extends over six to seven folds. So it's really a very large lesion. I just want to demonstrate that you can use this underwater approach even for very large lesions. So we're beginning our piecemeal EMR here without submucosal 
uh, injection. Now, this lesion is so large that uh, we perhaps should have considered marking the perimeter on the normal mucosa two to three millimeters away from the edge of the lesion, and then we would use those marks by extending the resection out to include them to make sure that we had a complete resection. But I found uh, that during the procedure with a very high definition instrument and an image which is really better of course than the one uh, you're seeing here that I can actually track uh, the edges of the lesion quite easily but I just want to point that out that that's available to you APC as I mentioned uh, works quite well underwater you just uh, march right up to the uh, mucosa, normal mucosa, and tap it, and you'll get a nice, well-defined uh, APC mark. And so it works in the same way that your uh, snare electrocautery works underwater. Now, a lesion the size, of course, we're going to remove it in a number of pieces, probably 15 to 20 pieces. But I think actually the number of pieces is reduced compared to a traditional submucosal injection EMR with gas insufflation because the lesion tends to stay uh, smaller. So we're now cleaning up the edges as we get to the end of the procedure. Of course we're going to carefully inspect the perimeter of the lesion and the base and remove any uh, residual tissue that's present. There's a little red area there that's actually residual polyp. The other red thing is uh, a vessel. But we go around the perimeter carefully, clean up the base, and then we've completed this underwater piecemeal EMR. You might be wondering whether I personally have switched entirely from traditional EMR techniques to underwater techniques, and I haven't done that. I still find the traditional techniques to be uh, very useful, and I look forward to and anticipate that many centers will do comparative studies looking at speed of transection, ease of resection, outcomes like efficacy and risks between traditional and underwater um, techniques. But something that I've done at times is a sort of a hybrid um, approach. I've found that if there's a part of a polyp that's really hard to access with gas insufflation, that oftentimes underwater it's still quite difficult to access. So it may be helpful to inject that part first, and that's what I've done with this polyp that's adjacent to the ileocecal valve. Part of it is on the proximal side of this fold, and part of it is distal. So I injected the portion that was on the proximal side to sort of roll it up, haven't injected the distal side, and then we've gone underwater here, and we're starting at the distal edge and removing that, and then we're going to move across the lesion, we're going to move toward the more proximal aspects and stay underwater as we're doing the resection, and you can see that the the blue submucosal defect where the injection occurred and the sort of white submucosal uh, defect where there wasn't any injection. But I found that that initial injection makes that portion of the polyp easier to access uh, even underwater. There you can see the defect in air after the resection has been completed. So I recommend in some instances this hybrid approach to EMR. So underwater EMR is a new technique and we need to congratulate Ken Binmuller on the development of this technique. Certainly it's going to be subjected to a lot of study and comparison to standard techniques, but it shows a lot of promise and it warrants our consideration. That's the ASGE Tip of the Week. The Tip of the Week is brought to you by an educational grant from Braintree Laboratories.